Pretty. Thank you. Good evening. This is the Mount Anthony Union School Board meeting on Wednesday, June 26th. I'm not sure if we're live, but it's 532 uh, on. We are live. We are live? It's not memory. Okay, we are live. Exciting. Well, um, well. Richard, welcome back from your month at the beach. You'll be catching up on all those uh, minutes. That you had while I was away. Yes, lots of meetings. So welcome, <laughs> everybody. Ken, it isn't even. Look, there's a fan for you. Thank you very okay? much. All right, we ordered the cooler weather. So in reviewing the agenda, we have public comments. Um, really, I'm, I had called this a business meeting because we just had some end of year uh, things to take care of, uh, specifically around finance. Uh, the SVSU board will be adopting the, um, the har which policy is it? The bullying and harassment policy, but mm -hmm. we're, we're before it, unfortunately, so it'll come after. Uh, the SU will adopt it. Um, and Leon is in the policy meeting and should be in here momentarily. So do we, and I will actually ask to take off one of the consent agenda items for an explanation, which is uh, Stephen Green and the sustainability teacher, which we'll have a short discussion about that. And then we'll decide if we're going to put it on there or not. Ken? Do we have an explanation to a Miss? the forest because it seems like she's resigning later today but we're hiring her before i don't we'll understand. explain all that ken we've got that all okay. the library which one allison laforest is okay. what you're talking yes. about right yep we do have a quorum so uh public comment do we have any public comments can you state your name for the record, please? My name is Holly Band, and I um, emailed you and asked for an executive board meeting, and I hadn't heard. So I um, would like to make a public comment. Okay. Um, I brought an issue forth. I brought went through all the steps of the process in reaching out towards change. I find in that process there's miss, missteps and gaps in communication. In each step I've taken to have a, ex, to explain myself. I have to explain myself every time, I'm sorry. You should know this, but you don't. In each step I take, I have to explain myself from the start, from the start once again. Shouldn't you be aware of these matters as you are to see that the school is run effectively and efficiently? I feel you are in place to set direction for the school system to bring about prudent action through administration by policy. The direction being all policies developed SVSU-wide so the rules do not change from student and staff from district to district. Where is, a person, where is the person under 1018? Number six, that informs concerned persons as to their rights, privileges, and responsibilities. Apparently there is not one in place because I have received no guidance in this matter. Is this Holly? This is Holly. Holly, thank you. Um, I, I do understand that uh, you're frustrated, and I know that um, some people have gotten back to you. What you have asked for for executive session um, doesn't really qualify. So your, record, your, admin, your notes are on record. And um, we'll, yes, Fran? Yeah, well, I, I don't understand. What is, what is it about, I guess? I know, I have, I have this same letter eloquently written, but I really don't understand what the problem is. Well. You know, um, Sue has I, Sue has met with um, with Ms. Bannon. Um, Sue and Dave has have met with um, Holly. Donna has met with Holly, and I think she would like something in place. Uh, if I can, you know, understand that she would like to be a, a, some kind of liaison between the administration and the sports teams and in accordance with the policy that talks about communication. And no? I, I don't need to be anything, but there should be something in place. One that comes with an issue, bringing an issue forward, has a process to go through. The process has different steps, and yes, I have spoke to people. The policies in place, directed by the boards, across the board, have never been used. I would request an executive board meeting because you're confused and I'm not getting my what I 
would like out. Ollie, we have hired administrators that deal with that for us. We don't personally deal with personnel issues or sports issues or um, things that happen with students in particular. Those are the parents' prerogative to come forward to and through administration and then to the board. If you have a personal experience with your own child, uh, please, by all means, let us know and we will, we will try and accommodate that. The structure in place leaves one with a child under this umbrella having the experience. So it's not your child. This matter landed in my lap, lap inadvertently. So are you the are you the proxy for that parent? Is that parent giving you permission to the first speak on their behalf? Involve a student. Oh, the, has the student's family given you permission? Involve a student. Okay. Well, I, I I'm I take your comments under advisement. The board heard them. And um, are there any other public comments this evening? I, I, I'm I just, sorry, Fran. I, I guess I just have a question. I'm trying to understand, but it, are we saying that? She, it sounds like she wants to have an executive session because, from while I'm understanding it because it's personnel with this board. Are we saying that the public can't do that? I guess that's what I'm asking. They need to go through the steps of administration and if it's appropriate, then we can take that under advisement through the superintendent or the principal that that's a matter that would come before us. Well, what I'm hearing though is she's gone through the process, so I, that's, that's why I'm confused. I need somebody to tell me. And, uh, and I'm sorry, Holly. Go, go, ahead. Ahead. go ahead. And uh, she has met with David. Then she met yeah. with David and I. Then she met with Donna, David, and yeah. I. We feel like it was taken care of, and I think Holly doesn't feel like it was taken care of. Well, I guess I wish I knew what it was so we could understand what well, exactly. Well, none of it us is. know what it is, but the administration does know what it's about and they have spoken to know. that family and has Donna. It's not Holly's family. It, it, this, the, issue, the issue I'm talking about is the beginning over a year ago. The issue I'm talking about does not involve a student. It's leadership. And the administration that I went to to straighten this out does not know the intention or the issue I'm talking about. Well, then you need to go back and tell them and, you know, see if we can articulate it so that it can go through. But our uh, administrators feel like it was taken care of. So are there any other public comments? Tara, do you have? Well, that's why she comes to the board. That's, yeah, the uh, administrators aren't doing it, and the board has I don't. I don't understand this. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be difficult, but if we have a parent, obviously she's a parent or somebody and they want to have a meeting with the board. I've come before the MAU board before because of a problem as a parent. Tim remembers that, I think, way back when. So has something changed if we don't, I, I think it's important that we listen to a parent if she, he or she has an issue and I, I'm just concerned that. Did you get the email? Mm -hmm. uh, I believe so, yes. The whole board got the email. email. Okay, right. yeah. But I, I still don't. I didn't get the email, but you got the I, email. I just still I don't understand what the issue is. If that's a, if she's, I'm and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but if you're not satisfied from going to through the process, and you've talked with Donna, then last I knew it should come before the board. But I and if I'm wrong, somebody tell me. I don't know, but I I think that if there's supposed to be an issue. And I've told to follow people before. I've had other people like this to, you know, follow the process, which I've told them to do, and they do. And I know I've had the com uh, conversation with Catherine, then it comes before the board if there's no resolution. satisfaction, I guess, or resolution. Thank so you. So if it's resolution. the board's pleasure, in August, I will schedule an executive session for Holly if this has been going on for over a year and it hasn't been resolved at the leadership level then I will schedule the an executive session if it's the board's pleasure. Tim, how do you feel? I really can't take that much time out of this meeting, so no, would you like an executive session? 
I don't, I don't think the, the situation, I think, was handled in the proper way. It went to the administrators. It went to the administrators in terms of the principal as well as central office. They feel that the issue has been settled. Um, you know, I'm comfortable with that. Dave? I, I'm completely in the dark. I, I have no idea what the issue is. I didn't get the email, so I... Uh, There's nothing in the I don't know what we're email. talking about. Can I explain how... No, I'm going to schedule an executive session for August since it's the board's pleasure to hear what it is that, you're, that you feel has not been resolved, even though all the administrators and the assistant superintendent and the superintendent all feel that the issue that you brought forward from a year and a half ago was resolved. So I will take care of it in August. Are there any other public comments? Go ahead, Lori. Um, I just wanted to bring to the MAU's attention is that um, I have come to kind of find out, uh, you know, because MAU covers the middle school, there have been a lot of changes and because of the late budget and everything, there's been some staff movements. And I'm not quite sure, like, I wanted to ask a question about paraprofessionals, and I don't know which group that goes to. I also don't know, um, with all the staff movements, I'm hearing a lot of, well, we don't know who's going to be here, and we don't know who's going to be there, and it's making it really difficult for me to put together my, an educational plan. And how do I find out the information when staff is leaving the building, and I, I don't know who to call? And I, well, I guess I'm struggling with it because I'm, I, you know, staff's away at training and, and I'm not sure so who's available. So I'm going to answer your question. So it's a transitional time. I know it's late. It's, it's hard. Really late. <laughs> and um, late. the Mount Anthony board does not uh, assign, as far as I know, we certainly as a board do not assign uh, paraprofessionals. Uh, Tim May, and he is out of town, and I do believe that he will be, uh, he's at a conference with some faculty. I believe that there's some, people work in the office all summer long, so as I'm sure as soon as they know, they would be happy to tell you they may not know. So that's the best I can do. And the challenge again, you know, it's because the budgets are late, and I understand that, but staff's not available, I have staff not coming to meetings, I have staff that, you know, are waiting for other people to answer questions, and I am left Again, floundering, floundering, and it is very, very frustrating. And I have said to the board, we need these budgets in place early so we can put whatever transitions our students need in place so the children and the students are secure, the staff is secure, and we are in chaos. And nobody seems concerned to me, and I'm bringing it to the board because I am concerned. I want educational partnership, and I'm not getting it and I don't know what it's going to take for me to bring everyone to the table at the same time with the availability that I'm making because education is a priority to me and yet I'm not getting that and I'm not sure what it's going to take to bring everyone on board with this whole concept. And I'm, I'm coming to you saying, you know, we can't continue to let this happen because, you know, staff shouldn't be left floundering, students shouldn't be left floundering, and neither should parents. And as you can tell, I'm quite frustrated. I have no answers, still. And I've been asking for transitions to take place since January. And that's just not fair. Uh, all I can say is, uh, you know, I'm sorry. I know it's frustrating. It, it, can I ask a question? Yes. Is it in a, into an MAU building? Is it into This one. It's just going from one grade to the next. Okay, I was just making sure <laughs> That's it wasn't why. my building. No, it's this building. Right. And of course, I don't have the principal here, so even if I come to the board, I have no answers and the board can't respond because this individual is not here. So again, so you can, I'll, I'll check fact, up another you know, week. People do, I, I'm sorry, people, you know, have, you know, it's actually not necessarily summer. It's It feels like summer, the, the kids are out, but people are working at the best conference at farm to school gardens. I mean, they're all, still working they're just not right here so I'm sure if you leave Tim a message he will I'm not sure what his schedule is I don't have it but well I'm just letting the board know message. it's just I'm still here I'm st I've been asking for transition since January and, and here I am June and late June at that thank you Just real quick while it's the MAU meeting, and I'll have other questions for the SVSU, but 
Regarding the issue about bullying that's happening in this school, I noticed Catherine's not here, so I don't know if she she's... She'll be here at the SVSU meeting in an hour. Okay, so I just want to make it public that for the people who weren't at the SVSU meeting last time, that I'm concerned that bullying that happens in this school is not being addressed appropriately, or at all. Thank you. Did you get the letter from that? Uh, Are there any other comments? Public comments? Okay, the treasurer's report. It's. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to accept the treasurer's report? Tim. You want to make a motion to accept the treasurer's report? Yes. So move. Sorry. Is there a second? Second. Are we All in favor of accepting the treasurer's report? The treasurer is here. If you have any questions, do you, do you want to go through the borrowing now? Well, let's accept the treasurer's report. Okay. All in favor of accepting the treasurer's <coughs> report? It's unanimous. Uh, the budget status report is in there. We'll come back to that and we'll skip down to F, the bond anticipation note. Right. As most of you know, that w this, the uh, district has to borrow money in order to meet expenses until the assessments go out to the district. And each year, the treasurer contacts a number of banks to get the best rate. The best rate we have for borrowing approximately $4 million, $4 million, $4 million is about 1.29%. We do have arbitrage on that. As most of you know, arbitrage is a difficult thing these days, and I think we're getting an arbitrage of 0.23%. So uh, we have some documents, and what I'd like to do is have a motion to waive the reading of the documents and sign them so that the treasurer can borrow the money so that we have the funds to be able to meet expenses. So moved. Is there a second? Second it. And how much are we borrowing? Four million. How much? Four million. Four million. From People's United. I'm sorry, yes. Are there any other questions? No. Richard, what else do you need for the record? Um, it's for a year. Um, July. So can we post, I'll make a note to post it. We, uh, we all have to packet. sign that. So I know, be but the post, it, it can be posted in this packet because it wasn't available right. at the time of posting. So we'll put it on the website for people to look at. How many at. signatures do we need? Everybody. Where is here? All in uh, favor? How many different sheets? Three spots. Three spots. I think it's <laughs> unanimous. Tim was busy. I think he, he said yes. So financial updates really is uh, the budget status report and the special ed supplementary assessment, uh, both for MAU and in the SVSU budget. Rick did pass out. This is what you passed out, Rick, the secondary? That's the special ed uh, portion of the SVSU budget, MAU special ed portion. Okay. <laughs> I was given hard copies of this. Do you guys need hard copies of your budget stat report? I don't know who produced them or why they produced them. but No, but you could pass them out. They were handed to me for, well, if you need them, I've got them. All right. So you want to go through this um, assessment resource room uh, two-page document? Yeah, the... Um, Three, four. Four. As all of you know, the um, special ed <coughs> operations have been uh, difficult this year and for a number of um, circumstances. I have one here that was highlighted now. I've lost it. I, hope it out. Um, I just wanted to walk you through where the um, the situation arises for Mount Anthony. If you look at the first page, um, two thirds of the way down, you see uh, function direct instruction $1,200. You look over to the right, you see a deficit of $309,000, is a rough number. Um, that is offset somewhat by, if you look on page three, you see another function direct instruction, 1200 with a surplus of $259,000 roughly. Large part of that is, most of you understand the time samples that we have to do for teachers, um, teachers and paras. 
and what is determined as reimbursable and non-reimbursable. We build the budget such that um, based on the previous year's time samples, based on how much is reimbursable and how much is non-reimbursable. During the year, we book everything to the reimbursable line until we get this year's time samples and we can reconcile that. So as you can see there, um, we have $259,000 to reconcile against that $309,000. So we still have a deficit of uh, roughly $50,000. A big portion of where that is is in residential placements. If you look up one, two, three, four, five, about seven lines above um, that total of 303 deficit, you'll see that there's a large residential placement deficit. Uh, that's was largely driving that $50,000. We have some other savings, for example, through contracted services, a couple lines above that that's help offsetting some of that. Um, so. That's one area I wanted to identify for you. The second area is, again, back on page three, about a third of the way down. Uh, you see transportation has a deficit of roughly $133,000. As for reimbursable transportation, there's a non-reimbursable transportation down at the bottom of the page of about $14,000. The total of about $155,000. Those totals, when we net it all out, if you look to the last page, um, as of today, um, we have a deficit in the resource room of $172,000. Now, we will get reimbursement on the majority of that um, to the tune of about 50%. Um, Higher for the, the residential. Um, the, um, the reimbursement flows through even though these are expenses are in SVSU, the reimbursement flows through to MAU into their general fund. Um, this has happened in the past, not to this degree. Uh, special ed is often an unusual, unknown uh, target. And, um, I guess I'm three times. Never seen it this large in the past. However, um, the as you all, so most of you know that have been on the board, you can handle this one of two different ways. You can either pay for it this year um, out of your general fund, pay a supplementary assessment to the SU to cover this deficit, or the SU could carry the deficit into the FY15 budget, which I wouldn't recommend. That would make that budgeting a very difficult year. Um, and especially since you're receiving the revenue in this year, it would make more sense for you to put the expense in this year as well. So um, that's my very sure. brief. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Tim? Yes, two things. Um, what, what is going to be, the, in your best estimate, what's going to be the net cost to, to the district? In other words, are we talking about $90,000 or something like that? Yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would say somewhere between um, seventy-five dollars and $90,000. And if the residential placement, I, I thought that after $50,000 it, it was reimbursed at 90%. That's correct. Is that right? So that will all pick us. Yeah. And the next question is, do we have um, anticipated bills that will come in in July that apply to expenses that occurred during our fiscal year, or is this a pretty, pretty close to a bottom line? Um, Yes to the first question. The two questions. Yes, we. I found out on Monday that there's um, another twenty thousand dollars of expenses that were uncovered. Um, I don't know how much of that twenty thousand totally affects on Anthony. I haven't had a chance to get into that detail yet. Uh, that came out of the uh, sped office Monday afternoon, um, and in that same meeting, I learned that. Um, no one has um, gone through in detail the files in that office, so I don't know what else is down there to be found. Okay, I, you know, I not that I don't want to, but just in terms of moving it along, I, I certainly think that, that Rick's recommendation is is the proper one, and that is to meet whatever expenses they that we have incurred to make up that deficit and take it out of this fiscal year's surplus that we will we will have a surplus we do have the money to be able to do it rather than having it be a negative 
in terms of our next year's budget. I agree. So is the so it's the 170 specifically uh, the direct bill to MAU, yeah, right? I, I rounded it to 175. You can round it down to 170 if you want. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, 172. You can. But remember, we've got reimbursements for that. Right, and they come back to Mount Anthony, not to the SVSU. Correct. Dave? Uh, you, Tim just mentioned the surplus for this year. How much of a surplus are we anticipating? Um, I haven't gone through that detail, but I know you at least have the $300,000 in contingencies. And, um, you know, at minimum, you can take it out of there. Well, that goes to 700000 Well, there's, if you look at the, ex the report that was just passed out, we have, um, after the encumbrances, there's 3.5% left of the $26 million. Ken and then Ed. I just don't understand this uh, time sample. I mean, we've been hearing this for the last couple of years that, you know, the state came down and slapped our fingers and we paid off. And then supposedly the teachers were going to be instructed as to what things a parent can do for us to get reimbursed and not get reimbursed. And they were going to get directions so that everything they were working on was working with those needy youngsters so we would get reimbursed. And someone's missing the boat here. I mean, it's not like $20,000. It's a lot of money. No, no, no. Don't, don't, don't misinterpret what I said. First of all, um, no teacher, let me, very few staff members can be 100% reimbursable just by the state formula in and of itself. I mean, if you have a staff member, member doing nothing but special ed work. They parse out some little blocks of time for um, you know, hall duty or whatever other duties that may be around in a building. They say, no, that's not sped work. We're not reimbursing you for that. So even somebody that's, you know, unless they are really doing nothing but watching one child all the time, they'll never be 100% reimbursable. Well, they were not uh, even then. This, this is just my accounting. We will get the time samples, and we will know what, um, how much is reimbursable and how much is not reimbursable. And we will make those adjustments in the next couple of weeks. At the end of the day, you're fine with that portion of the budget. Your operating budget, as far as your staff and benefits and salaries are concerned, that's fine. We, we have all that budgeted. We just book it all to the... Um, reimbursable account because frankly we're hoping that's where it all lands at the end of the day and then we just have a small adjustment that's got to be booked back to the non-reimbursable once those time samples come in. Those time samples are required to be done twice a year and we have one in December we you know we we take a look at it the principals get it they manage it if they find somebody isn't you know um, doing the amount of work that they're supposed to be doing as far as special ed work as opposed to regular ed work there's adjustments that are made then there's a final time sample that's done in April? Uh, twice think, a year. I think it's in, I think the second one's in April, and they're just reconciling those for us now that we're going to have in the next couple of days to make those adjustments. And the other question, how can we be over so much of transportation? Um, it um, wasn't very well planned for. Is it a program that put us down? or? Um, it is largely the plus transportation. Mm -hmm. That much over. Well, and just if you take a look on that one uh, residential placement line, uh, that. Where are you going, Tim? I'm trying to get that. To get to our treasure. Thank you. I think she came to get it. Yeah. Oh, you got it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if, if you look at on page one, the residential placement, I mean, the, we had anticipated one residential placement. That was that first, that first column. And we had more than that. So there's the bulk of your money. You know, there's that, I mean, the overage is 263,000. Um, so we've, we've spent, uh, we've spent uh, 600,000 on residential placement this year billed to MAU and we have some left encumbered. So, I mean, that's, that's where the bulk of it is, and then the... This plus now, is this year that we just are finishing up, it's been broken into the grammar school plus and the high school plus. Right? Well, there's a plan going forward. Oh, it isn't done that way now? No, I yeah. thought it was done this year. The high, at the high school it is. It's going now forward. Now it's going to also happen at middle school. 
So this, still, so this transportation plus is just for the high school youngsters. No, it's still none is for the. It still flows through the general plus program. We we separated out the high school this year, the first year. Right? Yes. We're separating out the middle school next year. The high school went very well. We're assuming the middle school is going to be the same thing. So at that point in time, that program is going to be self-contained within your budget, as opposed to being assessment from this plus budget. That Thank won't you. be until 2015. Thank you. So how do you want us to, Ed or Larry? Who are you pointing to? Ed had a question. I don't yeah. Know if it does or not. It's <laughs> you answered one because Ken brought it up. But what is the definition of a residential placement? Because that's a tremendous amount of I money. I think Donna it, can answer it. I mean, or any. Yeah, it, it, it can be one of a couple different things. It could be literally placing a child in a residential setting where he or she sleeps and goes to school and stays there. It also could be day placements. It's, it's, it's probably the better term would be out of district placement would be a better uh, description for it. But they're not educated in our facility is probably the best way to say it. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it's all according in terms of special ed according to their IEP. So in other words, it's their personalized educational plan and their team that decides that that's the best placement for them. So Rick, how do you want us to handle, oh, I'm sorry, Fran? Uh, out of that 20,000 uh, that you just spoke about before we got into this, is any of that uh, going to be assessed to Shaftesbury or... Is that just BSD or what? Is, or any twenty thousand? The twenty thousand you talked about. There's more. Uh, you found another twenty thousand. Oh oh oh, 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 oh! I don't know. I haven't got. It. I just. Oh. I, I, I had a meeting Monday afternoon and said, "Here's another twenty thousand. I didn't. I don't know which district it is, who it is, where it's coming from. I don't even know if any of them Mount Anthony. It may be all one district. I don't know. I haven't got into those details yet. And we don't know what's left, if any. And I was told that no one has gone through that office yet to determine if there's anything else down there. Okay. So as I so as I just asked, what would is do we need some kind of acknowledgement or vote on this? I'd like a motion yeah, to I'd, to pay that supplemental assessment. I'd, I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, pay the supplemental assessment in to, FY13 in through the budget of FY13 and I would encourage Rick to uh, wait until mm -hmm. all the numbers are in so that we don't find that you know couple weeks in July. So more if necessary is what you're saying? Yeah. Or less. Can, can we encumber some money so that we can pay whatever we owe during with the money that we have awesome. in this year's budget? I would, I would suggest you change your motion to pay whatever deficit not to exceed a, some number just so you know, it's not totally a blank check. But I mean, it's 200,000 or 300. You know, pick a number. 100? Uh, <laughs> $250,000. What? 200. No, I, I'm at 125,000 limit. 120, well, you already got 175. Yeah. Well, no, that's net. I'm talking about what you're going to have to, you're only talking about $90,000 in terms of what we're going to actually have to pay. No, you we're going to get reimbursed. You're, you're going to have to pay SU the 175. You'll get reimbursed the other, so the net number is. Oh, I see. Okay, so we'll have to make that payment, right. and then we don't balance it then out you, before then we you pay get the, it. You get the cash around All right, August, then we'll go. August 15th or something. Okay, I understand. Well, so we'll go to 250. Oh, I'll second that. Yeah. Okay, so that's Tim and Leon. All in favor? One, two, three, one, one, two, three, four, five. Opposed? One, two, three. Motion passes. I, I would like to say, uh, Sean Murray, I don't want to vote on anything, so I know what and how we've got coming, and I don't know what that is. So I, that's why I'm voting. This okay. is the first time I voted no on this stuff. Okay. But when I can't get answers from the business manager, I, I that's red flag goes up for I me. I gave you an answer. Well, you did. You but didn't like it. There's right. right there's okay. more yeah. to come, maybe. But so, that's not it. So, uh, Rick, did you want to? Um, that was on. That was only one half of the um, the equation. Now, do you want to bring up the? Yeah, the other one. The other one is, um, and the reason why I asked you to take a motion on that one is because that's actually a direct bill to you. I mean, what you know, every dollar you spend, you have to pay. It's not proportional. Um, all the other assessments are proportional based on your student population. 
Um, the issue at last week's meeting, um, there's another deficit in the SU in the administrative services uh, assessment stream to the tune of $158,000 that I know of today. Um, that it, well, it's actually not true. What I know of today is um, about $100,000. I'm anticipating some more expenses that are going to bring that to $158,000. Um, and the SU board uh, authorized a supplemental assessment for that, of which your proportional per pupil share is uh, just under $88,000. So that's an informational um, piece that um, you know you can obviously send your uh, your uh, representatives back to the SU for tonight's discussion if you choose to do that because they're going to revisit that tonight from my understanding. Um, but that's just an FYI of an additional bill that's coming down the pipe. Okay. Uh, any questions? Under the next part under finance, there's an authorization, and I I, I don't really think we. Um, you don't need the first half of that. You already done. You've already done. Right, it. and I'm not sure we even need the second half. But are we going to be looking at contracts? Or is it contracts as in the super? I mean, there's two motions here. One is. I put that on there. I did. <laughs> so. Um, we need a motion to authorize the superintendent to issue intent to hire letters for vacancies that open during the summer. And then we will see them in August. And there, are, can you tell me how many openings, Sue, you have? Uh, one. One. And I think there's one at the middle school. Does this there's, in. I think, go ahead. Several. Does this include openings at the SVSU office or no. only, only at the. Only no, the this is just MAU. So move. Second. So that would be uh, the any one of uh, you could do it any you could do it any which way you could have um, myself and Leon or you could have two out of the three of us sign as opposed to one if it's the board's pleasure the, it still has to come back here for final approval so uh, who made that Tim and Leon yeah Leon too so. so would two other people like to make the motion since it's Tim and Leon who would be signing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Ken you know, and right. <laughs> Dave, that's right. uh, all in favor? Well, the, the motion is that, that two to authorize. Three right. Three right. Three. right. Right. Because we were saying it. Okay. <laughs> Second. All right. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Fran. So on the consent agenda, uh, you will see that there is a uh, the nomination a is is for a sustainability teacher tim is not here to discuss this so i'm going to before we make a motion to accept the consent agenda i had uh, written to tim and as he's a new principal i'm not sure he was aware that if he was not going to hire a, a the same teacher that retired that and create a new position that it had to go, usually we have it go through the ed committee and then the full board to approve the, the position. So what uh, this position is, is it's the, sustain, what he wrote is it's the sustain, sustainability position requires a science certification and Mr. Green holds a valid science certification. In developing the idea of the sustainability at the middle school, I spoke to Catherine and Donna to explain my rationale and was asked to dra draft a job description. He worked with Marie to create the job description and listed on school spring after following up with Cath Catherine, I'm requesting a change in position from the applied tech, which is a, re which was a, which is a requirement to sa sustainability to better use of resources of the family uh, consumer science room, the workshops, and the garden. I'm unable to attend the MAU meeting this week as I will be in Burlington from Wednesday to Friday at the farm to, with the farm to school folks. One of our goals as a team is to develop the curriculum map for sustainability. So we can either approve I, I have a this. Question. Yes. Don't, don't we have to post that? It was posted. Oh, it was posted. And I think what happened is when we were discussing over this last year about somebody retiring and the gardens that this made 
since the job description was actually on the personnel committee, um, but it never made it it never made it to discussion, and then it never made it to an ed committee at MAU. So we can either approve this position or hold it till August and approve it then. Will we lose this instructor if it's not? I think some kind of interim. I think he actually, and now I understand why he uh, had asked when we met because he wanted to come, and I kind of assumed he was coming on the garden. It wasn't until I saw the consent agenda that it made, <laughs> that it clicked, that that's why he wanted to come. And um, he is working in Wilmington, so I believe he had to give notice in Wilmington, so that's a really good point, uh, Ed. I mean, I mean it I was posted on School String, it was posted on our <coughs> website. And I'm just being perfectly frank about what the mix up was. I think these are difficult decisions to make unless we had Tim here. Right, and he he and I know he, he can't he can't be here. Um, you know, I, I, I and I also think that your point's a good one. We don't want to lose a, per, a person that is capable of handling this position that we have experience with simply because you know, we postponed it, and he feels that he has to look for a job someplace else. So I don't know. I'd like to know why we're not replacing a tech ed teacher with a tech ed teacher. Now programs do get old and, and need to be replaced at times, I understand that, but I'd like to know more about what sustainability is and, and how it fits the entire program. So what I'm going to do is we're going to pull it from the consent agenda and Ken, I know we don't meet in July, but maybe you'd like to have an ed committee so we can at least get a report and the minutes out to the board on and answer those questions. With oh, the beginning of entails, August. With the position entails. Yeah. We won't be meeting till the end of August, right? Or what right. Okay. So, Sean Marie, just going back to Ed's question, are we are we jeopardizing this the possibility of hiring this person if we if we delay that? I can't answer that except that I would say I, yes. I mean, well, realistically. Realistically, yes. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, he needs to have a job. He's not going to. Tim. Uh, Tim did mention. This is not the first time we've heard this. Right. Guy. He mentioned it at our last meeting. In fact, last in meeting, the yeah. in the email, I I I actually have in Richard's minutes that it says, Payne also noted that he's planning on creating a new unified course, which is not a required course. It's they they rotate through in the year. It's not a, an all year long course on sustainability that will use technology, the technology lab and the food and consumer science lab as well as the gardens and that he's interviewing candidates for this position right now. The course would replace the applied tech course, the teacher of which is retiring this year. The course will better prepare students for a wide variety of offerings at the CDC. It will continue. Uh, he will continue to review these and other changes with the ed committee. And that was from the minutes. That was from your minutes that you just approved. So we make a motion. So I'm, speak I'm, to it at yes. all? I'm comfortable sure. saying that if Tim were here and, and he had a chance to explain it, that I personally would be you know, willing to to go along with it. So I, I you know, I'll make, make a motion if you want, but good. But I and think I, we should leave it in. And I could speak a little bit to it too. Well, maybe I, that would help. Um, and I do think that it what. If the board could uh, at least change the the position tonight, then we could even uh, in the summer issue an intent to hire letter and have some clarification on the job description and have that more complete by your August meeting. Uh, it really is a position that Tim would like to get some planning going to develop curriculum maps and what that position is going to mean for the uh, student coursework. Which, if we delay it until August, it's making it really late. So I, I just want to ask for your consideration there. Uh, uh, make, the position me. is really a, a shift for the school and, <coughs> and for the district, really, to incorporate more of the garden and the agricultural planning, the science involved with that, and the integration into other subject areas so that there's some leadership in that direction. Uh, from uh, the person that's hired for this sustainability, which will include technology, building in uh, 
you know, hands-on materials and, and uh, really applications that will enrich the program <coughs> in broader ways than it has been before. And to do that, he needed a person who has those qualifications. I, so, I, I think Dave's suggestion is, is, is a good one, and, and because you suggested it, why don't you make the motion? So <laughs> you know, there's, no, there's no motion on the floor right now, but if you want to make a motion just for this um, position, right. we can do that. Dave? Uh, well, I'd like to hear more discussion if there is. Fran? Make well, the only way. question I had, is this person going to correspond with CDC? I mean, you talk about the gardens and, and things. We're hoping and that it will build in that direction. Yeah, that's, that's all I want to, I think well, it's a good in idea. His, yes. In his email to me, he, he does mention the coordination for uh, students coming from here to Yes. CDC, CDC to the okay. to the program yes. that they would right. be developing. That's fine. I just wanted to know that. There, okay. just the that's fine. The continuum. Which is a link we were trying. To right, develop. and I think Jim mentioned it. It was mm -hmm. communication. Ed? Since we don't have all the information on what this program is going to be, would it be appropriate to make it to authorize hiring for a one-year period, and then we'll reassess it when more information is available? Well. I mean, it's possible that, that any teacher that's a first-time hire is really a one year. on a probationary period for one year. But, I mean, it, right. it's that's two, a technically two. We need, <laughs> you, you need two actions. You're we need, need the position. Right. You, you need an action to approve the position. And we need the person. And then in the consent agenda, you will hire someone into that position. So who's making the motion for the... I'll move we, we uh, agree to create the position as... As Donna described, uh, no. which is the oh. sustainability teacher at the middle school. Yes. I'll second. second it. All right. Is there more discussion? All in favor? One, two, three. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Now, would somebody like to make a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Can we discuss that? Yeah. I'll second. I mean. Second it first. Second it. So, okay, I'm sorry. Is there something you want to pull from it, or is there just discussion? A comment. Okay, go for it. I see we're hiring our third girls basketball coach in three years, uh, and I have no objection to Brian Harrington. He's, I think he'll do a fine job, but uh, the fact that we've uh, lost the previous two appears to be a result of uh, parents who are out of control and I wish we could do something about that so we could keep coaches on our staff. Well, we've had three and three. He'll be the third, yes. Um, I, uh, I can only say that, uh, uh, that we have policies and procedures in place that we were asked to make known to uh, the athletic director to review with individuals or the parents or students or whoever in that position that are clearly stating the consequences of those that may step outside the lines of boundaries for that. And so I don't know what else the board can do besides have a, I mean, it should go back to the Sioux to have a lively conversation again within that area. And if, if we need to change something, we can change that. But I, I, I sent copies I mean, of what we have in place that should be sufficient to manage the situation. So, that's all. Duly noted. Any other questions on the consent agenda, Rick? Well, Sue and I need to co-explain um, a couple of transactions that are taking place there. In regard, I don't want to use names. Do you have the what numbers they are? I don't have the consent agenda with me. Are you talking about the transfers? We're talking about the budget no. transfer for the security? No. Letter C. We're talking about 7C and 7B. Um, what, and I think someone raised a question earlier Ken. about um, Donna. one of those. C is uh, a title teacher that is currently employed by the SVSU, um, working in the so MAU building. Crazy as a math specialist um, in that building. Um, we are, what's happening there is um, 
with the transactions that were taking place um, and in B we are moving that individual from an off contract position to um, uh, under the teacher's contract and going to uh, serve a couple of different roles. One so, is so. Can you explain your plan for the for the high school? He's doing well. Right, we but he's the business today. manager. You're the principal of the school. Yeah. So could he's, you please explain it? Yeah. Um, the person in B is going to be both a science teacher as well as the present job, which is director of the tutor. She'll do both. Um, this year she's going to be teaching two science classes and uh, letter C is going to teach the, the math classes. And then we'll be hiring somebody at SVSU to fulfill that, to fill that person's uh, original. And the net result of this is um, roughly a $25,000 savings um, to the board and salaries and benefits. And it's, I think it's a better setup personally because Sir, then we can. Can you explain a little bit more about what you mean by that about subbing for science and those? It's kind of not things? subbing. It's a she'll be teaching two science classes. We are teaching um, more. We have more all-year math classes, which is something we had talked about and wanted. We now have them in ninth and tenth grade, which means you need a few more teachers but we're not hiring any new teachers. This way we're saving money, but we have the personnel because she happens to be on staff and be a certified teacher. So so we're not, she's getting away from that title and just becoming a regular classroom teacher. Correct. Part, yes, but she'll also oversee the, we're not going to hire. Before she's about. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. And do we have somebody to replace the, the Higher end classes that Mr. Davis taught? Yes, that'll be Ms. Schoenbeck. She's actually going to Fordham University to get trained this summer. For the AP the classes? Yep. Okay. Any other questions on the consent agenda? All in favor of the consent agenda? It's unanimous. The Next, oh, there's a couple FYIs, and we we didn't ask what we, have, we have another. Oh, another another FYI. No, we have a we other. Didn't. Oh, an other. Okay. Now that we've saved you twenty five thousand dollars, <laughs> Sue would like to spend some of it. <laughs> you want to explain to her what you're doing. Well, um, all of the schools have looked at security, and uh, have met with an individual that um, Rick had sent to the schools, and. After looking at the report, there are many things that um, I think are unrealistic money-wise, but we do have a plan that I think would um, up the security at the high school, and it would come to the tune of around fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars. And we were hoping to take some of that twenty-five and then do the security uh, things that we had talked about over the uh, summer, which includes mostly in the front hallway having a clear vision, having uh, some security in the front hallway. That's the only door that's unlocked during the day. Um, but right now it's, you know, it's not the safest setup. So we're hoping to, we've talked with Jim Marsden, he's gotten all the plans together if we get the okay to do that. So it'll be done over the summer? Yes. So what does the motion need to say? Authorize the $25,000 spending? It won't be 25. It won't. Tim? It's, it's gotta be put to bid though. Over 20, over 15, yes. Okay. It, dep I, it depends on how, how it's being broken out. Can, yeah. I don't know. I'll how, talk to Jim. Jim but, uh, yeah, well, whatever has right. to be done, just be sure. Dave? Can, can, Sue, can you explain a little bit more about what the money would be spent yep. for? It would and, be and you, to. You mentioned that the only door that's unlocked is that. During the day. Well, not the first thing in the morning when the students come in. Right, but this but is the door we, that off of the courtyard. Yes, that and we've now locked even the other side to the cafeteria is locked during the day. Okay, so what would they? So we would redo the front when you walk into the, toward the main office, and there are uh, kind of glass, stained glass windows. We would move that out. So there's actually uh, an area where the receptionist is out there with vision. Right now, anybody could walk in and they wouldn't know till they're in the office so, that it's So prone. would you mind writing it up and then emailing it and I can emailing it to the board what your plan is? Yep. Was that, uh, do you want me to keep going? On it. No, we can, I mean, it's the board's pleasure. I think if, 
if we yeah. want to have it done over the summer. Well, I can do, can I just finish quick? Because I, sure. I don't know if they'll be opposed to this. Then we're going to take out the big glass uh, that goes into it, and we're going to make that more open, but shut the door that goes into the office. There'll be a, an alarm system. If something was happening out front, you just hit the alarm, and it would be an alert alarm. And we're also going to station one of our uh, management group, the security group, there all day long. It's mainly for the visibility of making sure. Okay, it's a you. much less expensive way to do it, and I do think it makes it safer. So, is there a motion? Oh, did you? Just a quick question. You said that the other doors are locked. How do we know that they remain locked? If somebody, it's not, are you saying it's not possible for somebody to open them? With a key. I mean, a lot of people have keys to certain areas. They could open them to get in staff. Faculty could. Aren't there fire code regulations that require them to They're be? Push you can, no. e you can push yeah. out. You can egress any place. Yeah, you can okay. go out anywhere. You just, can't come in. you just can't get in. Yeah. If they were propped open by, let's say, somebody decided to stick a trash can. Yeah. Then we would. Then our one of our security people would pick it up. They're walking all day long on the okay. campus. Okay. There's and no sure. alarm system though that would automatically. No. No. It would be going off because the remember we have three buildings that kids travel from. Yes. Sue, as you walk in the door, you take a right to go to the office. If, you, if I take a left, what prevents me from doing that? A person stationed there starting next okay, year. Okay, so that's the new deal. Yep. And we've been doing that more and more. Uh -huh. We've had our security person there. But now we're going to set it so it's a schedule. So did somebody want to make a motion, please? I'll make, I'll make the motion I'll, to... I'll uh, second it. <laughs> well, we need to, for yeah, the minutes. I'll make, I'll make a motion to um, uh, commence Authorize. the, the uh, revamping of the entryway into the high school uh, not to exceed $20,000. Uh, $20, so they improved the, the <coughs> that's to improve the security uh, right. of the, for the school to make an individual individual there. So I'll second that. <coughs> All in favor? It's unanimous. I, one question, is it going to be out of FY13 money? No, 14. It'll be out of 14? Okay, so, all right. Are there any other others? We need an executive session um, to update on uh, ESP and uh, our MAU off contract uh, compensation employees, or employment. So we're going to go into the conference room. Those who are staying, who are here from policy through SBSU and MAU to SBSU, yeah, there is pizza. We're going to be a journey by nine. Uh, that's a mystery. Oh, yeah, that is a mystery. You need anything in there? No. We're going to be quick. Probably our biggest. Probably. I didn't want to say that.